This video is brought to you by Spike Brewing. This is my favorite Goldie's Brisket you made, period. And it's on a Traeger. Better than that, better than that. That's the best. I don't think this has a chance in hell. Let's get ready to rumble. You ready to put your money where your mouth is? Are you ready to lose? I don't think it's gonna <laughs> happen, buddy. We'll see. I mean, you were there in Toronto when I bet James yep. that the Big Green Egg was gonna win, the Kamado Joe was all hype. Right. And he kicked my ass, and I got the same skill. The Kamado Joe is a good cooker. It's great, I have one. Yes, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think the trigger can hold up. I think it'll be a good brisket. I've never had a better brisket than on that Traeger, and I've never had a Kamado Joe make a brisket that I thought was the best brisket I ever had. So Not I see it, but it wasn't just the Traeger. If you guys missed it, by the way, we'll put a link at the end of the video. So after you watch this, you can go back and see that video where we made the brisket that was the, you know, it was the best brisket either of us had mm -hmm. tasted. I mean, it was really good, but it wasn't just that it was the Traeger, right? Like right. we we started off nice and low and slow and then cranked up the temp. We're usually we're doing high temp cooks on mm -hmm. the Kamado Joe and we pulled it at 195 and rested overnight instead of cooking all the way. I mean, there's a lot of things we did differently. Right. So let's do those things here. So over here, we're going to do the uh, hopefully winning team, KJ, Obi-Wan. And over Empire, here we're gonna do which is striking back as we speak. <laughs> so we're gonna give you we're gonna give you the shot. I mean you've been calling it the <laughs> Death Star. Yeah, here. that's true. We'll yeah, just I mean, call it Death Star. All right. You know, it's All right. the <laughs> Death Star. It is the okay. There's gonna be a lot of bleeps <laughs> in this video. Bleeps. I'll give you one better. All right. If it beats the KJ, mm -hmm. I will move it into the spot where Obi is. I think that has to be fair. And I think I then probably have to look for a better Kamado cooker. Maybe what are you going to do? Or something what about like that. if it loses? Well, I mean, I guess if it's an honorable mention, then we'll keep it on the show. We'll still do some cooks because okay. lots of guys have pellet grills, right? So we can do some. If it loses cooks. hardcore, it can go into the back of my truck and make its way to my house. That's no yeah, big deal. Yeah, that might happen. <laughs> but that doesn't feel like you, it feels like you winning, not yeah, you losing. I'm gonna so, have to stack the deck on all that All right, one. we'll send it to the fire department <laughs> if that happens. So let's start with the game plan for the Traeger because that's what we did last time. All okay? right. Let's start it at 225 and uh, let's run uh, Super Smoke, right? We did that last time. Yep. So should we run the Super Smoke just for a couple hours? You wanna do like a whole... All the way till the bark is set. Okay, because that means we can't bump the temperature up until the bark is set. That's cool. All right, so like six hours probably, five, six hours? Yeah, something like that. Okay, five to six hours till bark is set. And then we're gonna crank the uh, temp up to 275 Fahrenheit. And then we're... Uh, Gonna take that until the brisket internal temperature equals 195 Fahrenheit, because that's where we pulled it last time, right? Yep. Should we rest it first or just go straight into the warmer? Straight in the warmer. That's what we did last time, It was right? perfect last time. Okay. No need to mess with the formula. And uh, we're gonna do that 14 hours, and then the trigger concedes defeat. So the Kamado Joe, so this one, we're also gonna do at 225 Fahrenheit to yep. start, right? Now I am gonna do double indirect, I've never done double indirect at 225. So we'll see how well the Kamado Joe holds mm -hmm. that. I might have to call an audible and increase it if it's having a hard time with that okay. setup at 225. But we'll do the same thing, five to six hours till the bark is set. Yep. And then we should be able to bring the temp up to 275. We're gonna do um, wood chips, right? And then uh, the rest of this is the same, right? Yep. Internal temperature, 195, Strange warmer. Level. 14 hours, victory. Should we go get these things lit? Let, get them lit and season up those briskets and you know, as about 24 hours. Bye-bye. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi is my Kamado Joe, Big Joe 3. He's gonna be the contender for the Kamado cook today. So we're gonna set him up for success. We're gonna start by putting wood chunks down at the very bottom. So as the coals burn down, we're gonna have plenty of flavor. And then we'll put in a layer of charcoal, and then I'm putting in more pecan chunks, and then a little bit more charcoal. Now this is more charcoal than we're gonna need for this cook, but you always wanna err on the side of too much on a Kamado. You don't wanna run out and have to take it apart and load it up. And trust me, these uh, coals, when they cool down, can be used again, as you saw on the bottom. This is ready to be lit. One advantage to the Kamado over the trigger, is I get to do this. Yeah. 
Let's give those coals a couple minutes to catch and then we'll come back and finish setting up. So we got a little flame, we got some white coals. I think we're in good shape. So we're gonna start putting our deflectors in. And this is that double indirect setup that James from Smoking Dad Barbecue pioneered. All right, now I'm gonna drop in what's gonna be my water pan. I'm not gonna put water in it yet. We're gonna wait until the grill comes up to temperature. I am gonna drop in the slow roller and the slow rollers deflector, but we can always pull this off to put that water in when the time comes. So we're gonna start with the top vent all the way open, the bottom vent all the way open. We're gonna wait till this gets heat soaked till I can feel the heat. And then we're gonna start to shut it down uh, until we get to that 225 that we said we were gonna run at earlier. All right, let's go get that uh, Traeger grill fired up. Okay, this might be a little anticlimactic after all of that, but firing up the Traeger is actually pretty easy. Now, I got another bag of the Traeger signature pellets. These are the ones that we used when Nick said that that was the best brisket he'd ever tasted. So we're gonna give the Traeger the best shot and use that same flavor of pellets. That's enough to get us started. It's powered up. So we're gonna bring this up to 225, press and hold. Like I said, kind of anticlimactic. All right, I'll meet you back over at the board. Come here, check this out. So when you do these experiments, you wanna get two very similar briskets, right? Similar thickness, similar size, weight, 12.55 pounds, weight, 12.58 pounds. I don't think I can get any closer than this. So let's trim these things up and get started. I don't know if you guys noticed, but this is a Sam's Club brisket. I have switched from Costco to Sam's Club because I can get prime briskets and Sam's Club seems to like folks that barbecue better. They've got bone in, pork shoulders, etc. Let's get started trimming this thing in the meantime. So we're gonna start with the Mohawk, which isn't too horrible here. Let's see what we're working with on the side here. It's not too bad of a fat cap down here. Here it gets a little thicker. Boy, that point's looking pretty. You can see not a big decal right here separating, so this is gonna be good. And coming around here, we're just gonna round this out. Same thing here. This deckle doesn't look too bad, but we're gonna take this down just a little bit more. We don't need quite that much fat up top here or on the bottom as it will be as we turn them over. And then looking here, got almost no fat over here. So this is super thin and mostly fat. So we're gonna, we're gonna get aggressive with this corner, but don't worry, won't go to waste. We'll go to the sausage grinder. So you see here, the fat is pulled back here. I don't know how this got butchered that way, but I think we need to trim this back so that we've got a fat cap all the way around. So let's take a look at these two fat caps because we do have quite a bit of fat here. So on this side, it looks like I've got to take out at least a quarter of an inch out on the edges here and all the way down. But on the other side, it looks like it's nice and thin and in the middle might not even get a quarter inch. So I think we're just gonna focus our trimming on this one over here. These look pretty similar. I think it's time. Let's get them seasoned up. So a binder, warm water, and then the rub we're using still have not got better results than with the Goldie's brisket rub. So that's what we're gonna be using today. Nice even coat across the bottoms. And yes, we are cooking fat side up on both of these. The only ingredient I've been able to identify in the Goldie's rub that's not in other rubs is turmeric. And so I've been experimenting with making my own rubs with turmeric and I may get to the point where I've got a rub formula to share with you hopefully soon. So we'll get the tops and we want a heavy coat on the top. We want a lot of flavor here. Don't forget the sides. So we're gonna use meter probes to track our cook. I'm gonna put probe number one in this brisket and probe two in this brisket in roughly the same spot. All right, let's go get these on the grills. We got nice clean smoke here on Obi-Wan. So let's go ahead and get ready with the uh, water. So we're just gonna put, this is hot water out of the sink, but it's still not as hot as the fire under there. But I think we managed not to spill any into our charcoal. Then we'll put this back on. This is the new low profile drip pan from Smokeware. I'm gonna cover it in foil just to make cleanup a little bit easier. But if you don't have one of these and you have a slow roller, follow the link that's on the screen right now or in the description to get one because 
This is the only way you're gonna use a smokeware drip pan in a setup like this. Because this new low profile actually fits. On goes the brisket with meter number one. We are putting the point in the back at the hot spot. This is flat enough that I'm not anticipating that we're gonna get any pooling maybe right here, but I don't think I need to put anything underneath it. I think this is gonna be ready to go as is. Probe number one, set up, cook, beef, roast, brisket. We're only going to 195 here. Start cook. All right, meet you over at the Traeger. On this one goes, again, I don't think I have an opportunity for pooling other than right here, so I'm happy with that. Let's close it down. Let's hit the super smoke button. Meter number two, set up, cook, beef, roast, brisket, bring it down to 195 and start cook. Beer clock, Nick. This is of course the stout that we uh, brewed last time we'd had a brew day. Here's looking at you. There we Here's go. looking at you. To the Death Star. Well, so, I'm more excited about what this is right here. Yeah, so you asked to make a hazy IPA. Luckily, Spike does have a hazy IPA kit. Nice. So when you get your beginner's bundle, if you're a hazy IPA guy, you can order this. And this is everything that's here other than the two glasses of stout is part of the kit. So this is a more complicated recipe mm -hmm. than the stout, right? So we got a huge bag of grains. We got four different kinds of hops that are gonna go at three different times. Nice. Comes with the yeast, um, even the clarifying tablets, and then these detailed instructions. So we put eight gallons of water over in the Sprite Brewing and got it set up to go to 159 degrees. Yep. We're gonna go ahead and get started and get our grains in. Now, just like last time, I'm gonna put timestamps in on the video. So if you don't wanna watch the brew steps, you'll be able to skip over them and pay attention to just the brisket steps. We'll see you over at the kettle. So we got 14 and a half pounds of grains here. We got nine pounds of two row malt, two pounds of flaked wheat, a couple pounds of flaked oats, a pound of Carapolis, and a half a pound of Crystal 20L. This is a lot of grain to go into eight gallons of water. I'm gonna use my massive paddle to stir this up. I guess it's been about two and a half hours since we started the briskets. Maybe we should go take a peek, see if they need spritzing, huh? Let's take a peek. All right, I mean, two hours in, I didn't expect a lot of color. I was kind of hoping for more color than this. Looks like we're drying out a little bit over here, but we're starting to get color around. All right, let's just go ahead and give it a little bit of water. I think maybe the, uh, the water pan has saved us here. If I'm right, then the Traeger brisket probably will be a little drier and need a little bit more of a spritz. Fingers crossed it starts looking more like a brisket soon. Dun, 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 dun. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So I was right. We've got more color here, but it's a lot drier because we don't have that water pan. I wonder if I could figure out a way to incorporate a water pan if we keep this thing, we'll see. So we're gonna give it a lot of spritz here. We still don't have that fat turning into that brown, beautiful Texas brisket color, but I mean, it did darken up a little bit last time. So I might check again in an hour and just make sure that we don't let it dry out, that we're spritzing enough. So we'll see this in an hour. Our mash is complete. So at this point, we're gonna shut the pump off and then I'm gonna lift up the basket onto the hooks. Now I'll turn the pump back on and we're gonna run the mash back through the grain with the basket lifted up like this, just to go ahead and rinse the rest of anything through the grain. And that's gonna take about 10 minutes. I think in that 10 minutes, maybe we should go check the briskets, huh? All right, so just a reminder, we're at three and a half hours. I mean, consistently we're getting color around the sides here. It's darkening. I mean, this looks like a Kamado Joe brisket at this stage. Bark is not set, it'll darken up later. Let's go ahead and add some more smoke by adding some smaller pecan chips into the ash drawer. This is a technique pioneered by James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and he puts chips or chunks or pellets back here where the hot ash falls, and uh, you get more good flavor wood smoke while you're cooking. Let's see how that Timberline brisket's doing. I'm gonna say similar experience here. Still got a lot more color around here. Still super dry. I wonder how much that drying out 
will have an impact on the brisket. I know that most of the moisture is gonna come from the collagen rendering and the fat rendering, but I don't know, Nick, this might end up being a dry brisket. See you in another hour. We have started to bubble now, so this is the beginning of our boil phase. So I'm gonna put the first ounce of hops here, the Fuggle hops in, and uh, we're gonna let that boil with that first set of hops. Then we'll be putting more hops in and moving on to fermentation. So uh, let's go see how those briskets are doing, see if it's time to pump up the temperature yet. All right, we're just shy of six hours and uh, we got some color. I mean, it's not quite as dark as I would expect from an offset, but I'm gonna say this is looking nicer than the last one that we did on the Kamado Joe. All right, what do you think, Nick? I mean, time it looks to good, cut this thing but, up to uh, 275. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go ahead and start opening this up a little bit, and we're gonna inch the temperature up to 275. I don't know, Nick. I mean, it's looking good, but it has not developed that dark color up here. Oh, don't you worry. The Death Star is coming. You think it's gonna get there? Not only do I think it's gonna get there, I still think it's gonna be the absolute best. So let's go ahead and crank this up to 275, which means your precious super smoke is going away, because that only works to 225. I'm still confident. So at this point, we're not looking again at either the Kamado Joe or Traeger brisket until the meter app tells us that we're at 195 on each of them. And then it'll be time to pull them, get them wrapped with tallow, get them into the warmer. Well, you'll see when that time comes. Now we're gonna add an ounce of each of these three different hops pellets that were included in the kit. And I've got another one ounce package of each of these that I'm gonna be adding later. Turning the heating element off, turning the pump on, and when it's done with the whirlpool, it'll be time to get it into the fermenter. So now we gotta get the wort from the cooker here into the fermenter, into the flux capacitor or spike flex fermenter if you uh, want to use their product name for it. And all we got to do, we just move the pump hose over here. I'm going to turn the pump on and we're just going to let it go really slow, just a little bit. We don't want more than five PSI as it pumps into here. All right, so the, all that's left for tonight is bringing this in and letting it start to cool off. In a couple of days, we'll add hops and we'll add some yeast as the whole thing cools down and uh, I guess we'll see in about a month when we get to taste this one. It is almost time, probably another hour before time to wrap those two briskets. And uh, so I'll see you then. It looks like it's showtime. We haven't looked in three hours, Nick. You ready to see? Oh yeah. I don't know if this is going to be the winner. I mean, we haven't seen what the other one looks like. It's 195, so that means it's time to wrap. So let's pull it up off of here. It's a little crunchy on the bottom, buddy. I don't know. We'll see what happens with this heat. A little bit of tallow, a little bit of brisket. So we're gonna let that meter stick out so we can keep track of it. Not that we need to, but so we can. Let's head for the warmer. That's one. I think you have to admit, this is a better looking brisket right now. I don't have to admit anything. It's also a it little crunchy on the bottom, just like yours was, but let's see. Tallow and brisket. Into the warmer. Okay, so a couple of impressions. Took eight and a half hours on the Traeger, eight hours, 45 minutes on the Kamado Joe, no difference. I think the Kamado Joe one looks better, but you know, we know that they change as they rest. Just shy of nine o'clock, so if we let them rest for 14 hours, maybe 15 hours, it's gonna be brisket for lunch tomorrow. And uh, I still stand by my prediction. I think the Traeger's gonna do a good job, but the Kamado Joe's gonna emerge victorious. But time will tell. See you in the morning. Welcome to the Nick Takeover of Eat More Vegans. 
All right, enjoy the limelight while you got it. By the way, not a sponsored video. Traeger did not know that we were gonna be doing this video. So after slicing into it. All right, they look extremely similar. Yeah. If they taste similar, well, I'm not gonna tell you what my theory is if they taste similar. I still believe we're gonna get more smoke flavor out of the Kamado Joe. I think the way that we use the chips and like loaded up the flavor wood and mm -hmm. there's, I think we're gonna be able to taste that. I and do so I think, think this there is going to be, be a difference. Yeah. I just think you're wrong about the difference. <laughs> <laughs> and to prove it, you get to go blindfolded wait, today. Wait, wait, wait. That's no, right. No, no. It's the Death Star takeover of Eat More Vegans. The Empire is striking back. All right. And you're going All blind. Right. I got fat on my hands, so you can do it. Uh, not All letting right. you put food in my mouth. Flat number one. There you go. All right. Mm. Okay, that's got a really crisp bark, mm -hmm. juicy, super flavorful, salt right on my tongue, that's got to be the KJ, that's got to be the KJ. Flat, number two, right there. Okay. Mm. It's good, bark's not as crunchy. Not as crunchy. So really flavorful. Yeah. I'm not turning this brisket away. But you like number one first. Number one okay. is better. Number one's got to be the KJ. Okay. All right, should we so do a point? We're going to go with the number one point. All right, here you go. Mm. <laughs> okay, definitely the same brisket. Mm -hmm. Not quite as much crunch on the bark, but still crispy bark. Super juicy. All right. Best bite of the day. All right. I guess I'll take a bite of the Traeger. I mean, I'm sure that it's going right. to be fine. You can right. be bigger Last if you bite. want. <laughs> All right. Take the blindfold off. Give us some final thoughts on those. All right. Number one, clearly better from for a both. flavor for both. Like okay. the bark was more well-developed. I got that salt on my tongue. Mm -hmm. They were both just as juicy. And inside behind the bark, I think they were both similarly flavorful. Okay. But the bark is a big part of the brisket experience. Yeah. And so, oh, yeah. Bark's my thing. I'm sorry, dude. Come out of Joe. Welcome to Traeger Town. <laughs> both of your favorites were Traeger. All right. Sorry, buddy. So I guess, what are we naming it? It's the Death Star. Hey, listen, I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see the video that started all of this, where we did the first brisket on the Traeger, it's going to be uh, right there. And we'll see you next time on Eat More Vegans.